for example, sickness. You know, I said yesterday, people have said to me, you know, who in their right mind would choose to be sick? And I say, you got it. Exactly. Right on. Who in their right mind would choose to be sick? It's always a wrong-minded decision. There's always guilt involved in sickness. Uh, there's always pain and suffering involved in sickness. There's no joy in sickness. Who could celebrate sickness, you know? What, what is there to celebrate about sickness? Whether we're talking about mental sickness, or whether we're talking about what seems to be physical sickness, where's the joy in that? So, so then you start to say, wow, there must be some kind of twisted attraction. If I've just got two choices, and I'm still making a choice for wrong-mindedness, there must be some kind of sick, twisted attraction. Addiction. Addiction. I must actually believe that, that sickness brings me something. It must mean that I actually, if I'm choosing sickness, I must think that it's the better choice over something else. Wow, that's really insane. <laughs> it's safer to be sick uh, than well. That's pretty twisted. Uh, but yet, that's, that's, remember we're going down into the unconscious mind, in the, the shadow, and it's dark down there. And of course it's twisted, you know. It doesn't make any sense. It's insane. It's stark raving insanity. And so we have to kind of get down and we have to get at looking at, at what is the attraction down there. And that's part of what we'll do today with our, our movie clips. Um, it's, it's, there's so many fantastic movies that kind of expose this attraction to guilt, this attraction to misery. Uh, it's like getting fooled, you know, they used to call it fool's gold, where it glimmers and shimmers, and then you go for it, and you grab it, and you think you've got the nugget of gold, and it's just fool's gold. Where you think you, you finally get the outcome that you want, and then you're left holding an empty bag, you know, because it's not there. You yeah. How would you reconcile then, like, little babies or children getting sick? How does that, you know, with the, yeah. what you just said? It's, the decision is taking place in the mind, when we say right mind, wrong mind, so, so the mind is not in the body. So a lot of times people will, will talk about children and they'll say, they'll kind of equate the mind with the brain, and they'll say, well this is a new brain, this is a brand new brain, you know, it's just, just been formed, and you know, they'll say, well the thought processes haven't, been learned yet, and it's underdeveloped, and so on and so forth. But the mind isn't in the brain. That's why a, a child can seem to be born with birth defects, or spina bifida, or different kind of things, you know, cerebral palsy, and all these kinds of things, in the sense that, that the guilt of wrong-minded decision-making, you know, can be projected in the ego system to the body, and can literally be played out. So remember, everything in the world and the cosmos is part of that top tier of the self-concept, the dream that you gave away. And then the lower tier is pushed out of awareness, the dream that you dream is secret. So that's a secret wish to be sick. A secret wish to not be as God created you. And everyone who comes to this world has that secret wish. You know, no one comes to this world uh, enlightened. Uh, Siddhartha didn't come enlightened, Jesus didn't come enlightened, even though the Christians like to paint that picture sometimes, you know. Oh, holiness was born in a manger. <laughs> now that baby, <laughs> now that was a perfect baby, no. <laughs> Jesus still had lessons to learn, things to welcome. Yeah. Still had, still had, uh, came with, with an ego to be released or transcended. Which makes you know, well, that's a great head start. Might, might as well start at the finish line. Uh, that's really going to be helpful for me. So, okay, so we were talking about um, just in the beginning, and I'm just trying. I'm trying to kind of grab, get my mind wrapped around this. The two, the two self concepts, the dream and secret, and the dream and, and, and awakening, and awakening. And then you went to higher, you know, aligning yourself with higher self and ego. So if I were to say there is no, there is no perfection in this world, is that a statement that would ring true with um, perseverance? Yeah, you could say 
there would be no such thing as a perfect form. Uh, and you can say that that's definitely one of the ego defense mechanisms, we could call it perfectionism, you know, where the mind gets so set on trying to make a perfect form, obsessively, you know, and I mean, I've heard stories over the years, I mean, one friend of mine, she, every time she'd go out and play in the mud and get dirty, you know, her, when she would come home, her mother would scream at her and would rip all of her clothes off and while she was shivering uh, in the cold, would take the clothes over to the washing machine and wash the clothes. Clothes first, yeah. Clothes first, shivering little girl second. You know, it was this perfectionism kind of thing played out in extremes, but yeah, we would say that your, your natural state of mind as you were created is perfect. Perfect in life and a perfect... Yeah. Okay. Perfect, spirit perfect spirit goes together. Right. Perfect form is a contradiction. Okay. Uh, so that's why uh, even sculptors, I, I, I met a, a world famous sculptor who was in the Who's Who book and he was very renowned and everything and he came to my Course in Miracles uh, classes and he was fascinated. He was like, he ended up buying the book and having a Course in Miracles class in his studio because he was always working towards the proportions and making the perfect form, you know. And, and he discussed those things with me, proportions and, and the things in art that he found that he thought were perfect reflections in this world. And then the more we went into it, he could start to see that he had an identity that was tied up with those so-called perfect forms that was actually causing him pain and sorrow and discontentment. So, yeah. Come yeah, um, I'm attending a school for singing, and that has come in there to me too. Um, I went to the school. Actually, uh, I was like, I got the guidance to go to the school, and I was like, oh my god, school again! <laughs> and like, I thought I was done with that, but I went to the school, and I was just very open to be shown how to do this um, because I understood in one way that, okay, I'm not really here for the singing and I want to be shown how to do this because I'm using like the ego's thing of singing but I want to go beyond and just be when I, in whatever I'm doing so I can use like the, the things of the ego, so to speak, to go beyond. So I started this school and it, it showed up to be like this school where you don't get any grades, <laughs> you don't get evaluated if you don't want to and uh, you get to pick all your classes yourself. So I chose like meditation and art and film studies and <laughs> all those fun choir and singing, of course. So it was like coming together in all of those ways. And then when it came to like the actual singing and I was going to take like singing classes, it was <coughs> very strange for me to be told, oh, okay, just push it now, like come a lot of air, you know? And I was like, ah. <laughs> And it didn't feel natural at all. It was just like this forcing, you know, trying to find, figure something out, and it doesn't feel natural at all. So, and also like when my classmates, they, they sat around and they were like saying, okay, well, this is good, and this, you could approve this. And then it was my turn. I was like, oh my God, I don't want to do this. And I was like, oh, this is good. This, you could improve. And it's like, oh, no, 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 no. This is what I want to get out of. I don't want to evaluate anymore. Like you were saying too, like I don't want to have an opinion. I just want to sit there and be in peace in whatever, you know, however it sounds like, however, you know, however it seems to be in the form. So I talked to my teacher and I said, hey, I really don't want to evaluate the others. I don't want to say anything when they're up there. I don't want to say if I thought it sounded good or if I thought it sounded bad or if it, anything could be improved. So she said, oh great, okay, I'd love to support anything of, you know, the students here, we're here for you, and okay, so how are we going to do this practically? And I said, okay, um, well, when, when they've been performing, I'll just be quiet, and the others, they can talk, you know, but I'll be quiet. And she said, great, okay. So I told my classmates, and they said, oh yeah, that's good, that's, that's totally okay, but when you go up, it feels strange to say anything about your performance then. So I was like, oh yeah, great, good. <laughs> Why about this evaluation thing all yeah, the time? Exactly, <laughs> like, like, and then it's been taking me step by step because of course the judgments still come because I was, I was really afraid of picking up the singing again. I sang when I was 
when I was young, and then I didn't sing for years and years. And then it came like a couple of years ago, it just kind of poured out on me. And then I had like all these fears around it because I could feel that it was so powerful. And I didn't know what to do to with it because I was so afraid of it. And then now with this, as of allowing myself to just, okay, I don't need to judge. Like, I don't want to judge myself. I don't want to judge others. I don't want to think like, oh, that sounded good or that sounded bad or whatever. I just want to be and not have any opinion in it. It's just like the beingness. That's where my joy is, really. So, um, yeah, I'm really glad for, for the opportunity of using a tool, you know, of whatever, whatever you feel attracted to, like dancing or painting or cooking food or like whatever, like design, you were saying, like having, having it beautiful around you. It's like however, whatever can be used like with the spirit instead of the ego. Right. Yeah, I like that. You might even be able to sing it to them now that you've just spoken it, mm -hmm. only in the name of love. Because uh, that song is so beautiful, because the song is basically saying, only in the name of love can I rise above. In other words, the spirit can use anything that the ego made to take us up mm -hmm. in awareness, <laughs> higher and higher to that higher state of mind. So, it's so different from a lot of religions and spirituality, which is, you know, what's good and what's bad. You know, the do's and the don'ts. And we've all had reactions to that. Like, who says so? Yeah. You know, who said that this is a sin? Or who said that this is wrong or this is bad? And, and then we could say, well, there is a presence within us that knows our greatest good. That knows that we want to be happy. That knows that our free will is for happiness. And I remember even in Christianity there were times when we were told to say things like, not my will, but thy will be done. And I thought, that, that even sounds bad, you know, almost like put yourself down and raise up the will of God. But wait a minute, God's will for me is for perfect happiness. So what if thy will and my will are one? Are one and the same. What if I share the same will with the Creator? Well, it would make sense uh, from, if it was perfect happiness, but as soon as we, we get into choice, uh, how could free will be choice if there is no choice in heaven? I and mean, if it's just perfect abstract oneness, there's nothing to choose between. <laughs> You've got to have duality in parts before you even have choice. You know, so if, I'm not going to project choice onto God, I'm going to say, oh, let me use this choice that I seem to have to remember the oneness, to remember the non-duality. And this song is, is so beautiful, because it's like, it's, it shows you all of the things that we have struggled for in terms of the ego, and then it says, only in the name of love can I rise above, and it's just it's so beautiful, it's almost like singing what you were just were speaking. Mm -hmm. share it? There's a love out of this world, the only real love. Your love find it forever.
it for what is false and let it go. Give up the cost of holding on to what you think you know. Listen to the voice of love that's calling you, waking you to the only true reality of you. Thank you. 
Anytime you want, you can let go when the show, when the guilt and the suffering be laughing once again. Only in the name of love can I rise above. No jury, no judge. Wanting more, I got to have Fighting for what's in mind I'm building dreams, tearing them down Climbing mountains, hitting the ground And it all turns round and round and round and round Only in the name of love Can I Yeah.